we've grown accustomed to being the sole inhabitants of our planet, making it seem bizarre to consider that, not too long ago on the timeline, diverse human species thrived across different terrains. The Paleolithic era, or Stone Age, was characterized by its ever-changing environments. Communities migrated, mingled, and occasionally bred with one another. With advances in archaeological techniques and technology, our understanding of these ancient humans becomes increasingly detailed, transforming our perception of the Stone Age from a static exhibit to a vibrant scene. What is the count of distinct human species that have existed? This remains a contentious question with no consensus among anthropologists. A significant challenge in this debate is the scarcity of specimens available for study. Imagine attempting to reconstruct the full range of contemporary human physiques and features from only a few random skeletons. To date, archaeologists have discovered fossils from roughly 6,000 hominins, but only a few have provided genetic data. Researchers endeavor to determine which fossils represent new species, often basing their conclusions on minimal evidence like a single skull or a fragment of a finger bone. This task is challenging and often leads to disputes. Every scientific designation consists of a genus name followed by a species name. In our human lineage, the genus Homo, which spans back approximately three million years, encompasses over a dozen named hominin species, including modern humans, Homo sapiens. Extending even further, the hominin clan, which includes genera like Ardipithecus, traces back around six million years. Here are five hominins who played roles in the narrative of human evolution, illustrating the diversity of ancient human types. Homo rudolfensis exemplifies the challenges of defining a species with scant fossil records. Its classification relies on a lone discovery, a skull identified as KMMER 1470, found at Kubi Fora in modern-day Kenya, which dates back roughly 1.9 million years. Initially, this skull was thought to belong to Homo habilis, the earliest identified member of the human genus. However, several discrepancies arose. For instance, the brain case of this skull was unusually large. While other Homo habilis specimens featured brain volumes around 500 cubic centimeters, Homo rudolfensis's skull could hold about 700 cubic centimeters. Additionally, the Homo rudolfensis skull had larger teeth and a less pronounced brow ridge compared to other Homo habilis skulls. Ultimately, anthropologists decided that such variations were too significant to be accounted for within a single species, even considering gender differences. Thus, in 1986, KNMER 1470 was classified as a distinct species, Homo rudolfensis. Now let's go to Spain to find about another member of genus Homo. The Gran Dolina Cave in Atapuerca, Spain, stands as a monumental archaeological site featuring layers that delve nearly 20 meters deep and span over half a million years. The most ancient layers, dating back approximately 780,000 years, contain remnants of a hominin group named Homo antecessor in 1997. This species is often characterized by a blend of modern and archaic traits, some of its features resemble those found in Neanderthals and Denisovans, while others are akin to Homo sapiens. Recent research using ancient proteins from dental enamel of a fossil from Atapuerca has verified that Homo antecessor is a close sister lineage to modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, sharing a recent common ancestor with them. We now go to Indonesia to find about our next member of genus Homo. The only discovered fossils of Homo floresiensis are from Liangbua Cave on the Indonesian island of Flores. This species is affectionately dubbed hobbits due to their small stature, standing just over three feet tall. The initial discovery of Homo floresiensis was made 
in 2003. Despite their small brains, approximately 400 cubic centimeters, these human relatives were capable of hunting and crafting tools similar to those of Homo erectus, who had significantly larger brains. Their diminutive size may be attributed to insular dwarfism, a phenomenon observed in species living in resource-limited environments like islands. An example of this is the now-extinct pygmy elephant that once coexisted with Homo floresiensis on Flores, demonstrating a similar adaptation. Now we go to neighboring Philippines for another fascinating member of genus Homo. Recently discovered on the island of Luzon in the Philippines, Homo luzonensis is an island-dwelling hominin that lived approximately 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. Represented by only 13 bones, including teeth, finger, and toe bones, and a femur, these remains are attributed to at least three distinct individuals. In 2019, anthropologists concluded that the distinctive characteristics of these bones, notably different from those of species such as Homo erectus and Homo floresiensis, justified the designation of a new species. Particularly intriguing are the slightly curved finger and toe bones of Homo luzonensis, a trait they share with modern arboreal primates. This curvature hints that climbing trees may have been a part of Homo luzonensis's lifestyle. The latest proposed hominin species, dubbed Dragon Man, comes from China. The skull, first discovered in the 1930s, but only recently examined by scientists, has been dated to about 146,000 years ago. Researchers describe it as a long-lost sister lineage to Homo sapiens, featuring large square eye sockets, significantly large molars, and a pronounced brow ridge, these traits are considered more archaic. However, the brain size of Dragon Man is similar to that of modern humans. This find underscores the complexities involved in categorizing a single specimen as a new species. It's possible that Dragon Man might be a Denisovan, but without genetic evidence, this remains uncertain. This discovery serves as a fascinating reminder of the intricate and still partially understood human history. In addition to Neanderthals and Denisovans, whose genetic legacies persist within modern humans, other ancient hominins like Homo antecessor, Homo floresiensis, and Homo luzonensis also play crucial roles in our understanding of human history. While direct genetic traces of these species have not been confirmed in modern humans, as with Neanderthals and Denisovans, they represent significant branches of our family tree, offering insights into the diversity and adaptability of hominins. For instance, Homo antecessor is considered a potential common ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans, highlighting a pivotal point in our evolutionary timeline. Meanwhile, the unique physical adaptations of Homo floresiensis and Homo luzonensis, such as their small statures and arboreal traits, illustrate how hominins have adapted to various isolated environments. These adaptations underscore the complexity of human history, showing that our lineage has been shaped by a multitude of survival strategies rather than a single linear path. The study of these species not only broadens our understanding of what it means to be human, but also the resilience and ingenuity that our ancestors employed to thrive across diverse and challenging landscapes. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.